For a journalist with no experience working with digital data or digital forensics, it can sound really intimidating, but there's a few very specific things, very easy things that will make a big difference. One is preservation of digital data. So if a journalist encounters, for instance, a video on WhatsApp, it's important to save that video and archive it. And that can just be as simple as uploading it to Google Drive or something, because these sources on social media are transient and they're not necessarily going to stick around forever. And then the other thing is, of course, being alert to signs of manipulation of content or coordinated spreads of disinformation. To look for content manipulation, there's some great tools that are already out there for journalists to use. One of my favorite is called Invid, and it lets you look into the metadata, which is kind of the information captured by, for instance, the camera when it took a photo. And you can check that metadata against other evidence to look for signs that you know it wasn't taken at the time that it said it was, or that sort of thing. And then you can also look for signs that the image was photoshopped. And that's all available in this browser plugin that's very easy to use, even for people that don't have a lot of experience in this area. There's a few other resources as well. There's a Twitter account called Quiz Time that I personally really like that tweets quizzes about analyzing social media information or photographs from an open source investigation perspective. So that's a great way to follow that account, get little challenges, build up your skills in working with this sort of data and these sorts of challenges. I think especially in this media landscape where there is a lot of disinformation and distrust and conspiracy theories, uh, readers want to know more than just that you know, an anonymous source claimed something. They want to see the evidence and see the data for themselves. And I think that collecting this digital data and making that research available to the reader as part of the story lets them do that in a way that's becoming more and more important, even in more traditional journalism. Balancing privacy and the data that you make available is really important, especially if, like I mentioned, you're trying to provide the data transparently to the audience. One of the projects we're working on on Bellingcat is a map of all of the incidents we've found where civilians have been harmed by the ongoing war. And when we make this map, we have more incidents that we've found than we can release to the public. Because, for instance, if it's filmed through someone's apartment window or in their home garden, that's potentially quite sensitive. If their city then gets occupied by the Russians, they might seek out people that provided this information. So we, of course, need to be responsible in how we release information and make sure that certainly no one's uh, life is being put at risk as a result of having this transparency.